morning, church. We're so glad that you've joined us online today to worship the Lord together. He is worthy of praise. And the good news this morning is that as we praise him, our fear, our anxiety, those things fade away. That's good news today. Let's praise his name together. Hey, good morning, Acton Methodist Church family. We're so glad that you joined us online today, wherever you are. In Granbury, Texas, it is snowing, and so we're celebrating today that it's snowing. And actually, uh, God takes delight when His creation delights as well in the snowing. And in between the services, Pastor Christy delighted so much that she went out and she made some snow angels between the services, so that's an act of worship also. So we hope that you're staying cozy and warm, but you also make a snow angel today, however old you are. When are you going to get another chance to do that? So we're so thankful that you are here with us today for worship. I'm Pastor Wade, by the way, if, you, if I haven't had a chance to meet you. I want you to know that we've been expecting you in worship today. Every camera that we have here in the sanctuary has been prayed over so that whoever sits behind a screen might encounter the presence of the living God, whether it's in real time right now or sometime later today or throughout this week whenever you log on to worship. God is big enough, and so we're so thankful that you are here with us today, and we pray that you'll be blessed by experiencing the presence of the living God. I have a few announcements I want you to be aware of. One is that today was the day that we were scheduled to begin 
our youth classes on exploring the Christian faith. We call it confirmation classes around here. They were be- to begin today. We're actually going to postpone it till next week. And if you want more information about that, whether or not your seventh grader is actually involved with the church or in the community, they're still welcome. We'd love to have you be a part of it. You can contact Blake, our youth director, Blake at actonumc.org. Please let him know. We would love to have your youth, your student come along and be with us. Another announcement is that we just want to make sure everyone is aware that our office hours have changed. Our office hours are now 8.30 to 4, Monday through Thursday. So if you need anything at the office, if you need to stop by or call, please be aware that the office is open from 8.30 till 4, Monday through Thursday. This coming Wednesday, we have a prayer service on the 13th at 7 p.m. When, when God's people who are called by his name humble themselves and pray and seek his face, then he hears our prayer and he heals us. And so we'd love for you to come and participate in the prayer service at 7 p.m. this coming Wednesday. Jordan behind me, as well as Hal Liani, our traditional worship director, and the pastors will be here with our prayer team. We would love to pray. We are in need of healing. Our country is in need of healing. Let's go before the Lord and see what only the Lord can do. So 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Also, I just wanted to give you a big thanks for all of you who have been contributing and donating to the church in 2020. You've supported our missions and ministries, and behind every mission and ministry is a person who matters to Jesus. And I just want to tell you thank you for those of you who gave sacrificially of your finances. We were able to finish the year having more income than expenses. That's only the second time that we've been able to do that. Second year in a row we've been able to do that after about a decade of not being able to do that as a church. And so we're giving God all the praise and honor and glory. God is big enough. But thank you for your sacrifice and helping make that happen. God's doing something, and you're backing that up with the amount of money that you are giving. So thank you for doing that. We have much to celebrate today, not only with our giving, but for those who are celebrating anniversaries. We also have folks that we're mourning today, and we as a church family, we want to take time to recognize that. So let's begin with those who are mourning today. We want to remember the family and friends of Marilyn Buckholtz, who passed away. Also, let's remember the family and friends of Lita Frickland, who also went to be with the Lord. And we also want to remember Marlene Carl and her family on the death of her husband, Robert, this last week. Now, let's celebrate those who are celebrating anniversaries. As each name is read, wherever you are, would you find a way to give God honor and praise as you recognize these folks who are celebrating? So Charles and Jerry Ann McClure are celebrating their 61st wedding anniversary, so we can give God thanks for them. Also, Vern and Carolyn Flowers are celebrating their 61st wedding anniversary. Give God thanks for them. Richard and Janice Parcels are celebrating their 60th wedding anniversary. Give God thanks for them. We also have Chip and Zaina Davis, who are celebrating number 47. Praise be the Lord for them. And then also Jake and Caroline Brooks are celebrating their 11th wedding anniversary. So we can give God thanks for them as well. Uh, This is the day that the Lord has made, and you have chosen to rejoice and be glad in it whenever you're logging on with us. I'd love to pray for you as Jordan and the band continue to lead us in praise. Lord God, thank you so much for this morning. This is the day that you have made, and we are coming before you to rejoice and be glad in it. So, Lord, we pray that you will inhabit the praises of your people wherever we are. We know that you are not bound by space or time. So do what only you can do, and may you get all the honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, church. Uh, I hope you're staying warm and uh, cozy this snowy morning. Um, This week has kind of been off to a weird start, um, but the good news is that God is still reigning over it all. Um, And so I hope you join us in singing this song about God receiving the glory still in the midst of a strange time. Blessing, honor, strength, and power Yours alone now and forever Love this world could never stop There is no one like our God Reaching down to touch the broken Mercy breaking through this moment Faithful is the one who saves, worthy is your name. Oh God, the glory is yours, the kingdom is come and the battle is over. Jesus, in your name we rise and the glory is yours, the glory is yours. 
throngs of angels watch in wonder on that day when time is over every heart at last proclaim worthy is your name oh god the glory is yours the kingdom is come and the battle is been anyone anything like you nobody beside you there has never been anyone anything like you nobody beside you there has never been anyone anything like you nobody beside you there has never been anyone anything like you nobody beside you there will never be anyone anything like you nobody beside the glory is yours the kingdom is come and the battle is over jesus in your name we rise and the glory is yours the glory is yours oh god the glory is yours the kingdom is come and the battle is over jesus in your name we rise and the glory is yours the glory is yours oh god the glory is yours the kingdom is come and the battle is in your name we rise and the glory is yours the glory is yours nobody beside you there will never be anyone anything like you nobody beside you there will never be anyone anything like you nobody beside you there will never be anyone anything like you nobody beside you the truth this morning there is nobody beside him there is nobody like him God we just proclaim that this morning there is no one as awesome and as trustworthy and so this morning God we choose to raise a hallelujah to raise a song of trust and of faith and a trustworthy God and we look to you the only hope that we have the only sure foundation and we raise a hallelujah today Raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. And I'll raise a hallelujah. It's louder than the unbelief. And I'll raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody, and I'll raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. I'm going to sing in the middle of a storm. Louder and louder, you're going to hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the king is alive. He's alive. Thank you, Jesus. I'll raise a hallelujah with everything inside of me. I'll raise a hallelujah, and I will watch the darkness flee, and I'll raise a 
truth this morning, Jesus, that you're alive and you're working and you're trustworthy. And so we just call on you and we run to you and we cling to you, our only hope, our only sure foundation, the one who is unshakable and unchanging. God, we run to you today and we ask that you would speak to us and change us we want a holy interruption today. God, would you break through the walls and the barriers and get to our hearts, God, and transform us because of your goodness and for your glory. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, church family, wherever you are, we're so thankful that you are here once again. And I just want to echo what Jordan said. We're praying for a holy interruption as well wherever you are on this beautiful day so just got back from Colorado and in Colorado it's actually snowing more here in Granbury today than it was in Colorado while I was up there but one of the things we we got to do my son and I who's 11 on Wednesday morning we were able to to do some hiking uh, he and I both like to do a little bit of hiking and we hiked up a, a hill or a mountain called Bible Point and we got to the top of it, and the, the vista, the view, just the experience was phenomenal. I, I filmed 
22 seconds of it. I want to share it with you. And you're going to hear some noise. That it's not because of your computer. It's not because of anything. It's just the wind that's blowing. And I want you to have the full sensory experience. That you couldn't go to Colorado with me, I want to bring Colorado to you. So I want you to see what my son Caleb and I experienced on Wednesday morning. And it's going to tie into what happened on Wednesday afternoon. So here's Bible point. Yeah, I want you to see that because up at the top of that hill, over 8,000 feet above sea level, uh, we were just sitting there peacefully observing God's creation, and creation calls out that there is a creator. And then we came off the mountain, and when we came off the mountain that afternoon, we started getting texts uh, about what was going on in Washington, D.C. We also started getting texts of people that we knew in the church family and otherwise who were in the hospital because of COVID. And so we went from a mountaintop experience down into the valley, and when we got to the valley, we, we heard of everything that was going on that didn't cry out that there was a creator. And as I was reflecting on it that afternoon and evening, this passage of scripture that I want to share with you from Psalm 20 really, really stood out to me. And I want to share it with you this morning because it's so easy to get overwhelmed with COVID, with the stuff that's going on in Washington, D.C., with weather like this morning. But I want to share this hope with you. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. Let me share with that share with that with you one more time. Maybe wherever you are, you can share it out loud as well. Some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. Today I want to spend some time visiting with you about uh, things that Jesus never said. <laughs> Jesus never said, follow your gut. And so we're going to talk about that today. And if we're not following our gut, who are we following? Let me pray for you. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for today. We thank you that you are the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega, Lord. Some do trust in chariots. Some do trust in horses, Lord. But we are choosing today to trust in you. So lead us, guide us, poke and prod us, comfort us, and heal us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So if Jesus never taught, follow your gut, what did he teach? Well, I want to take you old school. I want to take you to the Old Testament, and we're going to look at, at 2 Chronicles just for a little bit this morning. In 2 Chronicles chapter 6, just to give you a brief overview, you have King Solomon. He's over the, the Israelite people. And after years of wandering in the wilderness, of, of just being God's people who've traversed that area of the world, Solomon, who was wise beyond his years, felt compelled to build a temple for the Lord that the Lord would reside in. And up to this point, the, the covenant of the Lord, the Ten Commandments, resided in the ark that the Israelite people carried everywhere that they went. But Solomon decided to build a, a permanent dwelling place for the Lord to be in, that people would know they could go to this place and the presence of the Lord would be there and he would hear the prayers of the people. So he went to this temple after it was created, and he dedicated it unto the Lord, and he called upon the Lord and said, Lord, the prayers that are going to be lifted up by your people, who you have called by your name, Lord, would you now give attention to their prayers so that they would know that wherever they are, and for whatever reason they are praying, that you would hear them pray and that you would respond. That's Second Chronicles chapter 6. And in Second Chronicles chapter 7, God responds and said, yes, but I'm going to respond in a way deeper than what you ever thought. And here's one of the ways in which God responded in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, which is a good word not only for people back then, it's a good word for people today, right now, wherever you are. He says this, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. Now, I want you to understand the tension that is here. 
Solomon was leading God's people. These are people that God had chosen. He had set them apart. He did that with Abraham, the very first person. He said, Abraham, we know that you're an old man, but you are going to be the father of many nations, you and your wife, Sarah. And from that moment, God's chosen people began to populate that area of the world. And they were populated not just for their own blessing, but to be a blessing to others. And now up to this point, Solomon said, now we're in a spot, we're pretty comfortable. Let's dedicate this place to the Lord so that we can know that the Lord is honored and glorified. I mean, it sounds great, doesn't it? And instead of going, hey, pat on the back, everybody, you did a great job. Here's what God said. He goes, I will respond, Solomon, but I want you to understand there's some depth to this. And I want to share this with you this morning. Let's break down what God said here. He said it in an if-then statement. And I think it's a good word for me. It's a good word for you. As we try to navigate COVID and Washington, D.C. and weather and health and just the personal struggles and demons that we fight. He says this, if my people, now that's really, really important because God is laying claim to his people whom he's already chosen. And he's affirming them that their identity is not in anything else. They're not tall, they're not short, they're not fat, they're not skinny, they're not of one tribe or the other. Ultimately, what defines them is that God has claimed them. One of the things we get to rejoice in as Christians is that what makes us Christian is not just that we think we're nice people, but what makes us Christian is that God has claimed us. And we understand that, that claiming through the act of baptism and professing our faith. So he's addressing you and me if you place your faith in Jesus Christ. He goes, if my people who were called by my name. So once again, if we call ourselves Christian, that's more than just a title. It's different than claiming you are a Democrat. It's different than claiming that you are a Republican. It means that you are claiming the name of Christ. That means that you live for an audience of one. You are allegiant to one entity. What Jesus taught, you put into practice. What Jesus said, you mimic those words to other people. How Jesus lived his life, then we model ourselves after that. That is what makes us Christian. So when God was speaking to God's people back then, he was saying, look, my people who are called by my name, he's saying, y'all need to listen up. And then he says this, if you will humble yourselves. Now that, that, that's really big. I, I want to invite you to think about something. When's the last time that you humbled yourself before the Lord so that God's kingdom could, would come and God's will would be done in a decision that you were trying to make? How have you humbled yourself for the, in this week, for example, as you looked at what's going on in Washington, D.C.? Have you humbled yourself to the, before the Lord to the point where you were willing to change your opinion? Have you humbled yourself before the Lord so much because he's claimed you as his person, you were called by his name. Have you humbled yourself to the Lord to the point where you were willing to say that you were wrong about something? It's one thing to lift up prayers and to give God a, a laundry list of things that need to be done. I'm a list maker. I love making lists. And I find even in my own walk, many times I'll go through the, the repetition of a devotional because it's the right thing to do. And I like doing the right thing. And I'll do it and I can mark that off my list that I've done it. But I haven't humbled myself. Because humbling myself means I have to take the time to pause, not rush through it, but to humble myself to the point where I'm open to God actually changing my mind, changing my course of action, change how I might plan on doing something, or be humble enough to not do something I thought was a really, really good idea. So if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, and then God goes on and says, well, pray and seek my face. Praying and seek my, seeking God's face is an intentional thing. There's one way of praying where you go, uh, God, uh, bless me, bless my family, and, and God, you know the desires of my heart. I want you to do uh, everything in your power to align your will with mine. Now, we don't actually say that, but that's actually what it comes down to many times. I know I've done that as well. But to pray and seek God's face is a little different. To humble myself and to pray and see God's face is to come before the Lord. And for this week, for example, let's just, let's just kind of put a placeholder here. When it comes to, to COVID and the people who are dying or the families who are reeling from isolation, God, how can I pray for this situation as I'm seeing 
the reflection of your grace in my own heart. Lord, as you prayed, how do I need to pray? See, praying and seeking God's face is different than a laundry list. So if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray and seek my face. And then he also says this, and turn from their wicked ways. The definition of wickedness is that which is the opposite of righteousness. God's ways are never wicked. And God gives clear indication of what his ways are through the teachings and the model in the life of Jesus Christ. I know in my own life, if, I, if I'm continuing to go full speed ahead, and I'm, I'm, some would say that I'm, I'm kind of driven, and maybe a type A, have really strong opinions about some things. Some people would say that. But as I'm doing that, I can be so caught up in what I want to do that I actually operate out of my sense of wickedness. And what I mean by that is that without a Savior, I am bent towards wickedness because I will follow my gut. I will follow my own experiences. I will follow my own gut. I will follow my own reasoning. I know that about myself. And I would suspect that if we were honest with ourselves, most of us could affirm that as well in your own lives. So when God was telling God's people to turn from their wicked ways, it was an acknowledgement that God's love and grace comes at a cost. That for us to turn towards Christ means that we cannot settle for wickedness anymore. And wickedness is anything that is not of God. Is any decision that is not of God. Is it following your gut that's not of God. That's wickedness. It's not always just the real super evil stuff that you see on TV or the conspiracy theories that we hear or what we read about in novels. Wickedness is not, some, as many times, are not the big movements that take place, but it's the little turnings moment by moment, day by day, that because we're bent towards wickedness without a Savior, we'll go down the path of destruction. I recognize that in myself. God recognized that in God's people back in the day, and he recognizes it in God's people, you and I, today. But then he says this, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then, if then statements are pretty cool. So here's what he says, Then I will hear from heaven. Have you ever thought that as you prayed, God's not hearing your prayers? Have you ever thought that as you prayed, it may be just going up off the ceiling and batting back down? Or if you journal, you journal it, but it doesn't ever lift up off the page? Have you ever thought that it might not be that God isn't hearing? It may actually be that God is hearing, but you can't hear or listen to God's response because you haven't humbled yourself yet. You haven't prayed and seeked God's face. You haven't turned from your wicked ways. But God says, if this happens, then you can rest assured this is going to happen. I will hear from heaven. And many times our prayers are a monologue. I know they are for me. You're talking, you're talking, you're talking, you're laying your stuff out, you're laying your stuff out, but then you never pause to be silent, to actually listen how God's Spirit might testify to your spirit. It takes humility. It takes slowing down. It means taking God at his word, that he's already promised he will hear you from heaven. And he will hear you from heaven, and he will also forgive your sin. I know, because I'm bent towards wickedness, that sin is a real deal. Around here, we don't believe in cotton candy Christianity, where it's all about being a, having a pat on the back and going, look, if you just are motivated a little bit more, everything will work out fine. Around here, we believe in the historical tenets of Christianity, that we are sinners in need of grace. And that is the greatest news in the world. Cotton candy Christianity is not good news. It's mediocre news that people settle for. But we're not settling for that. We are in desperate need of a Savior. I am. And by God's grace, he recognizes that. And he provides that. So he will not only hear our prayer, but he will also forgive our sin. And he will also heal our land. Don't you want our land to be healed? Don't you want your family to be healed? Don't you want to be healed of the inner turmoil and angst that you may be experiencing? God's already declared that if you will humble yourselves, pray, and seek his face and turn from your wicked ways he will hear your prayers from heaven he will forgive your sin and he will heal your land that's one of the great promises that we can claim and stand on today 
There, there are a lot of things about Washington, D.C. that we don't know all the details yet. There's a lot of things about COVID that we don't understand all the details yet. All we can understand partly is all the repercussions from it. But I want to share with you how easy it is as we listen to these words of God to give us hope for today. That God knew through his son Jesus Christ that, that we still don't always get it. Jesus, as he called his disciples, he walked with them and he talked with them and he modeled for them for three years. And he lived life with humanity for three years. And he understand the depths of humanity and how much we struggle. And he was telling a, a story or a parable one day, and it was about the sheep and the goats. And I just want to share it with you this morning. When Jesus arrived, blazing in beauty and all of his angels with him, the Son of Man it will take his place on this glorious throne, and then all the nations will be arranged before him, and he will sort people out. Much as a shepherd sorts out sheep and goats, putting sheep to his right and goats to his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Enter, you who are blessed by my Father. Take what's coming to you in this kingdom. It's been ready for you since the world's foundation. And here's why. I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was homeless and you gave me a home. I was shivering and you gave me clothes. I was sick and you stopped to visit. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then those sheep are going to say, Master, when are, what are you talking about? When did we ever see you hungry and feed you, thirsty and give you a drink? And when did we ever see you sick or in prison and come to you? Then the king will say, I'm telling the solemn truth. Whenever you did one of these things to someone overlooked or ignored, that was me. You did it to me. Then he will turn to the goats, the ones on his left, and say, get out, worthless goats. You're good for nothing but the fires of hell. And why? Because I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was homeless, and you gave me no room. I was shivering, and you gave me no clothes. I was sick and in prison, and you never visited. Then those goats are going to say, Master, what are you talking about? When did we ever see you hungry or thirsty or homeless or shivering or sick or in prison and didn't help? And he will answer them. I'm telling the solemn truth. Whenever you fail to do one of these things to someone who is being overlooked or ignored, that was me. That was me. And then those goats will be herded to, the, to their eternal doom and the sheep will be herded to their eternal rest. The reason I'm sharing that with you, the reason I'm sharing that with you is that we can't always just follow our gut. Jesus never said that. What he did say is to come and follow me. In fact, that's one of my favorite verses in all of the Gospels, Matthew chapter 4. Jesus simply said, come and follow me. Just come and follow me. Follow me, not from a distance, but so close that you get covered in the dust as he's traveling through the, through the place. Follow so closely to Jesus that not only that you get covered in his dust, but you hear every word that he speaks and how he speaks it. Follow so closely to Jesus intentionally that you watch how he lives and you watch how he interacts with people. And then you mimic doing the same thing. That you follow so closely to Jesus that you no longer follow your gut, but you follow Jesus. The word made flesh. The one who created us for more than we have settled for. We, we don't know what's going to happen with COVID, and we really don't know what's going to happen with Washington, D.C., and we may not be able to see what's going to happen tomorrow. But isn't today, man, of all days, isn't today a good day to put your whole faith in Jesus Christ and follow him in every way, shape, or form? Isn't today a good day? There's no other day that you need to wait to do it. Today is the day to do that. I want to invite us to go through a time of, of confession and I also want to lead us through a time of praying for specific folks. Remember, we're not to follow our gut, but to put our faith into action in intentional ways. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. I want to invite us to go into a time of confession. 
I'm going to intro it, and then you're going to have a few moments to silently just be still. To confess your sins and your need before the Lord. And provide some space that his spirit might testify to your spirit today. And not just follow your gut. O king enthroned on high, filling the earth with your glory, holy is your name, Lord God Almighty. Wherever you are, perhaps would you just close your eyes, put out the silence, I mean put out the noise, and just be silent and do some self-reflection and examination right now. And then I'll call you together so that we might join together continually in the prayer of confession. Let's join together in our confession. In our sinfulness, we cry to you to take our guilt away and to cleanse our lips to speak your word. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw us to himself and cleanse us from all of our sins that we may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now that we have begun the process of humbling ourselves and seeking God's face, now I want to invite you, who shall you pray for? I'm going to offer you an opportunity to pray for certain individuals in certain situations, and, and I'm going to invite you before each one that as you, as you reflect on the grace and majesty of Jesus Christ. How can you pray for this person or situation? I'm not asking you to follow your gut. I'm asking you to reflect on the grace and majesty of Jesus as you pray for this person or situation. So let's begin. Through the grace and majesty of Jesus, how can you pray for this moment for the Christ-centered peace? of our country. Take a few moments to reflect and pray. Through the grace and majesty of Jesus, how can you pray for President Trump? Through the grace and majesty of Jesus Christ, how can you pray for President-elect Biden? In James, one of the New Testament letters. James speaks that anyone in need of healing should seek the leaders of the church. And those leaders should pray over that person and anoint them with oil. Uh, behind me or to the side of me, you'll see a bowl of water. And, and we're going to pray over that bowl of water that, that for anyone who is in need of healing, we might help them remember their baptismal vows. And we also have, uh, we also have anointing oil that as leaders of the church who've been honored and privileged to be a part of this, we, we can pray for those. Because James says that the prayers of the faithful are like a sweet aroma to God as we humble ourselves and pray and seek our face. So if you have need of that, wherever you are, whenever you are, we'd love to do that, perhaps this week. But through the, through the grace and the majesty and mercy of Jesus Christ, how can you pray for the healing of the sick?
to the grace and the mercy and the resurrection power of Jesus Christ? How can you pray for the eradication of COVID? To the grace and the mercy and the resurrection power of Jesus Christ, how can you pray for those with clouded minds and hardened hearts? To the grace and mercy and the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. How can you pray for the revelation of Christ to those who have eyes but do not see? Through the grace and mercy and majesty and resurrection power of Jesus Christ. How can you pray for Christians to actually follow Christ in word and deed? And in the grace and mercy and majesty and resurrection power of Jesus Christ, how can you pray for yourself to be humble and to seek God's face and to turn from your wicked ways? God told his people, whom he called by name and whom he chose, back then, just like he tells his people today, that if my people, who will humble themselves, will pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, and I will hear their prayers from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. Isn't today a great day for you to give your life to Jesus? In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and all God's people everywhere said, Amen. Pastor Christie, would you lead us through communion? Isn't today a good day to give our lives to Jesus? He calls, you know, He calls you wherever and however you are to follow him even you even you who thinks that this isn't for you for whatever reason even you we're gonna try it this way how about that and pastor wade's gonna come and make me feel very short as he helps me He had you, me, us, on his mind on the night that he sat in the room and he looked at his disciples knowing they were going to need a way back to him and a way back to one another. And he took bread and he gave thanks and blessed it and he broke it. And he held it out to them and he said, take, eat. This is my body, and it's broken for you. All that I have, all that I am is you, is for you. As often as you eat it, remember me. Likewise, at the end of the meal, he took a cup. It wouldn't have been anywhere near as beautiful as this. Think Indiana Jones. But it was blessed because he held it out. And he said, this is my blood, and it's the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And as often as you drink of this, I want you to do so in remembrance of me. And the bread and the cup, 
and the fellowship were ordinary no longer. It had been transformed. The people there had been transformed. And Jesus calls to this table all who earnestly repent of their sin and seek a true and deep and abiding relationship with him. This is for life for us. Ordinary no longer. Let us pray. Father God, we hear you. We hear you say, come and follow me. And we hear you when you have given us a yes before we even know what to ask, God. You simply say, seek my face. Turn from those things that are not of me and seek my face. God, we thank you. And we surrender not just this time, but the whole of our lives, the whole of who we are to you. It is a good time for us to give our lives to you. So, Father, pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us. Everyone who can hear my voice whenever they hear it, pour out your Holy Spirit on every one of us, on the water, on the anointing oil, on these gifts of bread and juice. Help us to remember that these things are your tangible means of grace, things we can touch and taste and smell. That's you reaching out to us. Make this bread and juice be the body of Christ so that we might be for the world the body of Christ until he comes in final victory and we all feast together at his heavenly banquet. All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Turn our eyes upon Jesus together today. Oh, soul, my soul, are you weary and troubled? No night so dark that our eyes cannot see. This light so bright as we look to our Savior. Life more abundant.
Amen. Amen. We're so happy you could join with us here today. What a great promise to look in the face of Jesus. And think of this promise that we heard today. If my people who are called by my name, if that does not describe you today, we pray today that you will make it so. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. And that is our prayer for you today. As we go from this place and represent Christ out into the world, remember these words. May the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with you. May the love of God the Father be with you. And may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore as we go in peace. Amen.